Welcome back to another one of these Biology Explained videos. In the last video, which you can go back and check, we covered the Xenomorph's dorsal tubes that protrude from the creature's back. However, today we will be looking at a separate back protrusion, and in the next video we will be looking at the Xenomorph in a jaw. But today we're going to look at this other dorsal support appendage. So, this protrusion is often looked over when talking about the structure, features and abilities of the Xenomorphs. This protrusion seemingly goes without explanation in the larger world of the alien universe, even more so than that of the dorsal tubes, which at least had some study on them in the expanded universe content. So without almost anything to steer us in the right direction, it is left up to us to evaluate the structure's most likely function. First of all, First of all, we have to assess what the structure looks like and determine what it could possibly be used for. The dorsal support appendage is located at the back of the xenomorph, placed between the dorsal tubes, but raised slightly compared to their position. The structure is also formed out of the spinal structure of the xenomorph's exoskeleton, but is able to actually flex and move to become almost flush with its lower back as possible, this feature being primarily for the sake that so that the creature can move through narrow spaces and its head can contort without interference from this protrusion. The dorsal support appendage also has a collection of spines that travel down the top of its structure and is complemented by a similar set of smaller ones on its underside. The structure is not as long as the dorsal tubes but it is much more rigid whilst the tubes are almost completely smooth on their exterior. Now, I have two main ideas to what this appendage could be used for, based on a number of facts, so let's begin with the idea that the first of the two uses are that it is for balancing the xenomorph. It is quite possible that one of the uses of the dorsal protrusion is to support and balance the creature, which is why I've taken to calling it the dorsal support appendage. This would mean that the dorsal support is used to counterbalance the xenomorph while it's moving around and putting excess amounts of weight on its front and back of its body. That would suggest that the dorsal support appendage has the ability to have a variable effect on the creature. It may be able to fill with fluids like the xenomorph's blood at times where the creature is exerting weight towards the front of its body to counterbalance the creature and then release the blood back into the bloodstream after it is done its job. This idea is actually supported by one main factor and that is th that is that the quadrupedal xenomorph casts are actually absent of this spinal protrusion. This makes sense if my explanation is true because the quadrupedal xenomorph such as the runner from Alien 3 wouldn't need this as it is primarily on all fours and has no reason to try and counterbalance itself and walk on two feet because it just simply doesn't do so. In this way we can see how it would then be important for the bipedal xenomorphs to possess the dorsal support appendage. The famous example of the bipedal xenomorph is a human spawn xenomorph XX121 that walks and travels primarily on two feet. It would make sense for this creature to have a structure like this in its body in order to correct its balance whilst moving at varied speeds and stances. The second use that this appendage could have is again support but not support during traversing its environment, actually quite the opposite. The appendage could also have the ability to assist in the hibernation of the xenomorph, both outside and within a hive. First of all, the structure appears to be able to have the head rest upon it, which would mean that it would be ideal for the xenomorph during rest, as it could allow its large, heavy skull to rest upon the spinal structure, saving it energy that it would be otherwise trying to use to keep itself stationary. Now, a similar thing could occur when the xenomorph hibernates or rests within its established hive structure, but I feel it would go a few steps further. It's quite possible that because of the extensive ridges on the dorsal support appendage that when fusing into its hive, the appendage would act sort of like a docking mechanism with, as would sort of the dorsal tubes. Whilst the dorsal tubes would probably fuse with the hive's biomass to transfer nutrients and, and perform other tasks such as maintain the xenomorph's metabolism, it's likely the appendage 
fuses into the hive's biomass in order to lock the creature to the structure of a hive, similar to how a spaceship would dock with a space station. I think this is another awesome way to bring about another biomechanical feature of the Xenomorph into canon. Now to explain the process, the Xenomorph would move back into the hive structure as the hive morphs to accommodate the dorsal tubes, which can help maintain homeostasis with the creature in conjunction with the hive whilst the support appendage and its many ridges and spines are wrapped around by the morphing structure of the hive in order to hold the xenomorph in place and stop it from simply falling or slipping from the structure once unconscious and in hibernation. Aside from this, it is also possible that it could be used for some sort of nutrient sharing between the hive and that, but I do feel that this is more to do with the dorsal tubes. Something it could be uh, doing with the hive though, which is even more interesting, is a telepathic sharing or some sort of mental hardwired link could occur with its hive. Having the direct neural link with the creature maybe would allow the xenomorph to share very important information, experiences, memories and other important data with others of its hive by doing something compared to a hard drive backup at the end of the day to the hive making all of the individuals within its colony smarter more knowledgeable and this could even allow them to become much more efficient killers and further cement their status as the perfect organism but what other videos would you guys like to see if you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered please meet me down in the comments if you did enjoy the video please leave a like and go check out project acheron on twitter and discord and if you want to support me further you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content the monthly and alien day giveaways and the patron only project acheron engraving set i hope you guys did enjoy the video and for now this is project acheron signing off